Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Uh, welcome to Drinking Bros. Mm. It's our it's our secret goal that Dan and I have uh, to have every single cast member of SEAL Team on the show. Yeah, we just got to get uh, now. We got to get Tony. Is the, is, is the only one left? Tony Trucks. Okay. And uh, what's the woman's name? I can't. I can't even remember her name. What's her name? What's Jessica. The... Jessica. Jessica. Well, what's her last? Pa- I can't oh, pronounce her last name. Par. Par. Exactly. Yes. I, wait, oh, you guys t- will love her. She's. She's great. You'll love her. Dude, oh, she is. I, I met her. I met her on crush Friday, on yeah. her when she was on Mad Men. She's. Uh. She's. She's actually super nice. Oh, is she? Like she chased. Find, Bert and I were at find, the set, and she chased us down to say goodbye. I'm like, all right, cool. See ya. Yeah. 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 She she's a legit human being, a wonderful actor, and and undoubtedly will go toe to toe with you guys, and <laughs> and 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 put you to shame on it. You got to get her on here. You guys will have a blast. Uh, we sure. we love yeah. to. We love to. We're <laughs> we're huge fans. Um, yeah. Again, Mad Men was one of my one of my yeah. favorite roles she played. Uh, she was great. Well, today we're talking to uh, Brock Reynolds. Wait, that's not right. <laughs> Justin Melnick <laughs> from Seal <laughs> Team. <laughs> Welcome. You even got the dog. Is that the dog from the show? No, 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 no. Adidas a little too Hollywood for police work right now. So this is uh, my new canine Pepper right here. We're in Indiana, um, and Dita's Dita's at home on the ranch with a woman and the kids, chilling out and uh, enjoying stardom. Yeah. What are you doing in Indiana, by the way? So uh, before the show kicked off, I worked as a police officer here in Indiana, um, small town between Anderson and Muncie. Uh, and they've maintained me the privilege of keeping my commission while we're in Hollywood. Um, so it's, it's pretty incredible. Our senior class is graduating today. So I came back, uh, to speak at their graduation. That's amazing. Ooh, I lost you there. Hang on one second. You back? Uh, That's fine. Yeah. Look, (laughs) you're a busy guy who's getting a lot of calls, um, during the COVID we're, we're zooming in with people. It's fine. The audience is used to it by Mm -hmm. now. Um, how did everything go? Was it awesome? It's actually tonight. So, uh, so I, um, just ran to the airport to say goodbye to some people that are leaving town that were here for some canine training stuff and, uh, didn't get a chance to catch them. So talking to you guys while I wait to say goodbye to them and send them on their way. And then I'll go back and deliver my awesome speech. Are you in a mid size SUV rental car right now? That's my guess of what it looks like. You're so close. You're so good. Oh. I am actually in a Chevy pickup truck, Silverado. Mm. <laughs> uh, oh, I've got a Silverado. Uh, I love Silverados. Me too. Best. What do you What do you drive? Fifteen hundred or twenty five hundred? Uh, I just got that uh, new Trail Boss. I got the Trail Boss on there. Oh, uh, it's it's custom too. Big fan. Big fan of uh, the Chevy Silverados. Uh, it's got that it me- that Z seventy one package. Uh, it's nice. Oh yeah, yeah. I never Sexy. get I never get leather seats though in any vehicle. My wife always shits on me for it. Well, if you get a dog, leather seats are important. But man, right as the zombie apocalypse, right as COVID kicked off, I was like, ah, I got to get rid of my Forerunner, and I picked up a Chevy twenty five hundred. Uh, and I figured if the end of the world was going to come, the only car that could get you through it is Chevy. <laughs> So I'm glad you guys like How Are you getting you, paid to say that? Because it seems like you might be getting paid to say that. Not only that, but you could be my long lost fucking <laughs> brother or something. I got rid of my forerunner to get the Chevy, to get the Silverado as well. There we go, man. Now just take off your pants and we can confirm if we're brothers or not. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's a different show. We're going to need a, a wider uh, angle on that <laughs> dong, if you know what I'm saying. Probably, I'll, I'll flop it. Dan knows this. I'll, I'll pull it out anywhere. It's probably <laughs> you're probably going to need it. better lighting, too, because it's really dense like a neutron star. It's almost a black hole. It's like sucking all the light in around it. It's tough to look at, my man. Yeah. Uh, once you're in it, you're never coming out of it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's either a, a feature or a medical condition. We're not sure. We're, we're, we're not. Doctors have studied it from both coasts, uh, MIT and Stanford. You can go ahead and spit it up in the rental car. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> Monster will not be coming out of my nose during this podcast. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rental, brother. Yeah. I have fucked up rentals in my day. Dan and I travel what we used to before the this bullshit virus hit. Uh, we, we're usually on the road every two to three weeks doing live shows, different places all over the country. We've had every form of rental car you can possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Dan, have you ever fucked up a rental car like on your own? Oh, yeah. I, I got a rental car. I guess this would have been, shit, what year was this? Um, 2008. Uh-huh. Mid-2008, mid my buddy was getting married. So um, got a rental car and drove all the way to Indiana, right? Like southern Indiana. That's where he is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the way back... Ran into a giant pothole, fucking destroyed the tire, right? <laughs> and uh, I just put the, I put the, uh, what do you call it, the spare tire on, uh-huh. and drove another like six hundred miles back uh, to the rental car place. And I just took the 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 tire that I fucked up and put it in the passenger's seat in the front because I didn't want him to miss it. But I didn't have time to deal with that shit. Of course, you put a seatbelt on it. They got a guy for that. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it to go through the fucking windshield. Obviously. Yeah. So obviously, it was a shit show. It wasn't I, that bad. Though. I feel like they've seen it all. Have you fucked up a car? Like you're? Is that, I bet your dog tears through some of these things. You know, Dita. Dita. Dita's actually the best travel companion in the world. Um, she's so delicate and doesn't tear anything up. Uh, this little duchy right here is a little bit different. Um, she will tear things up. I left her in the car for like five minutes yesterday. With I spent three hours searching for a box to mail a piece of equipment out and put the equipment in the box. And I literally left her in my car for five minutes and she destroyed the entire box. I spent another hour and a half looking for a box. No one had a box, ended up finding something like a tube that could work, but (laughs) two hours out of my day for like 10 seconds of this dog's attention. Yeah. Um, You know, but they're, they're Malinois, they're Dutch shepherds, same crazy, you know, they're not meant to be pets. People, People see him on TV. I think Dita's responsible for too many of these dogs, sadly, ending up in shelters because people see what she does on TV or on Instagram and think that that's normal for that breed. And, and you know, don't realize she's a one in a million that I put 10 hours a day of training into. Right. Um, and have had every incredible dog trainer in our country uh, work on her, you know, go out for training evolutions. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know. Uh, this one, this one is a little bit different. She'll get there, but she's still two years old, and you know she's just as crazy as the rest of them out there. So, you know, I try and obviously set set these dogs up and my own life for success. So I keep them kenneled ninety eight percent of the time. But just with with where I was traveling and my 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 baggage allowance and stuff, I couldn't bring a kennel with me. And my kennel here in Indiana was covered in dog shit because somebody borrowed it and didn't clean it out. Well. I, I would say this. I mean, it is a <clears throat> rental. Uh, you want to feel like you got something out of it because they, they kind of <laughs> fuck you every time you, you sign in. It hurts or, you know, dollar or thrifty, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Let the dog give him stop by Taco Bell on the way to the airport. Give him a number four and just let him shit that out in the back seat and turn it in. Yeah. She's not impressed right now. No, She's not that, impressed. That dog would be impressed with a number four in her belly. I can tell you that. Yeah. From Taco Bell. What about like a chili cheese coney from Sonic? Either or, either way. Get like it. you really want to get that fucking Duke moving. Get the yeah, get the dog some seasoned curlies and let that go <laughs> through the old intestines. Man, you should smell what comes out of this dog's butt just with normal dog food. Uh, I can't even imagine what would come out of her with that. I think Taco Bell. Yeah. Oh my God! Choose your smell, man. That that stuff is rough right there. <laughs> oh, it's great. I wish they were a sponsor. I could eat it every Who, Taco Bell? day. I love it. I love it. I hate authentic, uh, authentico Mexican food. Like the you know when they're clapping the fucking flautas and it's just you it's because you're couple, white trash. It, it is a hundred percent, and it's just a couple like strips of meat and then some cilantro. I'm like fuck you, dude. Get me some Taco Bell Americanized. I want the sauces. I want all of it. I want some hot sauce on there. Um, everything. Like I, I even love that shitty hot sauce from Taco Bell. I can taste it right now after, after I'm saying it out loud. You know, you're. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I think you should show us how big your balls are. I think you guys should come out to LA and visit us, and we'll go hit some of the street taco places around uh, Southern LA. Oh, I'll, I'll get down. So I, I lived there for fuck, man, 18 years. Uh, my favorite Mexican restaurant in this. Oh yeah, in this country we call America mm. is uh, El Compadre yeah, that place on is Sunset. Okay, that place is awesome. I, that place is really good. So I'm I get glad that, you didn't say like the fucking vegan one that that that's out there now. That's no. like no meat. Come yeah, on. there's a vegan. It's called like Taca Madre or something like that. Yeah, no, I'm not fuck sure, that. but someone invited me there, and they're like, "Oh, we're going to this awesome Mexican restaurant." I showed up, and it's all vegan, and I'm like, "Why? Yeah, why? Yeah. Why, why? Why would someone <clears throat> do this?" And and why are you doing this to me? It's not fair. There's but, a yeah, dude. 
there, there's a place in Oakland. I used to live in Oakland for a while, uh, for five or six, seven years. And uh, there's a place called Vegan Soul Food. And on the Yeesh. sign, on the sign, first of all, that's retarded. That statement in general makes no sense. But right. the, uh, the sign outside, Soul Food, big letters, mm-hmm. vegan, tiny at the top. Like, don't bait and switch me. Yeah. If I come in <laughs> looking for fried chicken and collard greens and shit, and you give me, because I'm from the South, we eat yep. that shit in the South all the time. If you try to give me some some vegan version of that, mm-hmm. I will stab everyone. Yeah, with a knife, and I'll burn this goddamn building down. And here's a fun fact: Dan only only usually carries a gun, but he'll he will carry a knife into a vegan restaurant. Yeah, because it's there's nothing. You, anybody can get shot. And you're like, all right, sweet, I fucking killed that dude. But if you get <clears throat> knifed to death. That's something that it's just everyone will remember in the restaurant it was like he had a knife. Well, he the good part is people up. when you just like make uninterrupted eye contact and push the knife in real slow. Right. Like the whole time well, you're just, just like a, maintaining eye contact. This just got dark real quick. Oh, oh is this, you might want to put the, the shades down, oh, my man. This yeah, is, we're we, going even yeah, darker. Are we recording That's this? why everybody remembers the OJ murders. If he would have just showed up and, and capped both of them, eh, people probably would have forgot about it. It was the knife, though, that really fucking drove that story home. Uh, you're, he's going to be the one laughing in the end when he catches the real killers, though. Yeah, that's I, true. He's He is still looking for the real killers. You're a cop. When you saw that case, you obviously, you know, he was not guilty. Um <laughs> Uh, <laughs> did you believe him when he said he was going to look to spend the rest of his life looking for the real killers? <laughs> I mean, uh, there's so much craziness. I mean, that guy alone, like he gets off the hook for that and he goes to jail for, he goes to jail for like strong arm robbery, trying to get some of his old sports memorabilia back. Like, like yeah. it's out of his mind. I don't, I don't know, man, I, but I did have a question for you. Cause we were talking about crazy food and, and things you guys were willing to eat. And you both seem like wild. Wow, cats me. Yeah. What's the craziest meal in the craziest country you've ever had? Oof. Um, um, I'll, I'll tell you what surprised me. Like the, the first one that comes to mind was when I went to France. Um, you think about how classy the French are and their food is amazing. And that's that's what everybody says. You know, you go to France. Oh, you got the food's amazing and you're going to have the best time ever. Well, I was in a hurry to get ready for this event that I was going to. So I went to this corner place around uh, the, the hotel. It was maybe, I don't know, 50 yards away. And I was like, I, I'd like some, some fine French food. And they gave me a baguette with uh, four hot dogs that were cut up inside of it and some kind of like French Parisian mustard on a baguette. I, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I was like, are you fucking... Is this a joke? I thought it was like an American joke. Of every, like, oh, let's give the American hot dogs. No, every right, every country every country's got an Alabama. Y- yeah, but <laughs> here's the thing. So I took it and I didn't know what to. I didn't know like how to react or whatever. And but there was a line of people that were non-Americans in this line. It was the best goddamn hot dog sandwich I've ever had in my life. It was on fresh baguettes and. Uh, was it a baguette or a croissant? It was a baguette. Um, and it was long. Interesting. So it was about, I would say it was about eight or nine inches long. Um, and I know that obviously to scale because all I had to do was put the baguette, you know, next to it. I'm slanging an ocho down there. That's flaccid. And I knew, <laughs> I obviously knew how long it was. And I was like, shit, I was full for the entire day. It was the best, weirdest uh, meal that I'd had like outside of the country that I was unexpected where I was like, I thought they were taking a shit on me. Turns out they were doing me a favor. I've never had a hot dog sandwich since and uh, I miss it. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, it's, this mystery has never been solved for me my entire life. I don't know. The answer. I'll go with it. If it's between two slices of bread, it's a fucking sandwich. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why. But it was on a baguette. It was like, an open baguette. I don't know why people are in the streets rioting and, and like creating autonomous zones just because we don't know the difference between a sandwich and a hot dog. If they're even, That's what people are writing about, right? Yeah, and Chaz right yeah. now. That's Everything that's going down is because of a hot dog sandwich. Right yeah, now. I don't know. I, I, everything I, that's going down, uh, that's, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We want to hear it from the mouth of a real live cop. I guess. No, man. <laughs> Listen, here, here's the deal. This, this, is, this, is, this is what I will say about what's happening right now. Is it's incredibly heartbroke, heartbreaking. I, I totally agree. There's no room in our society for people that hate people based off of their color, religion, sexual preference, sexual orientation, uh, sexual identity. Uh, you know, we've all, and on a serious note, we've all lost a lot of friends over the last 20 years. Mm. Um, not to mention all the people that have paid the ultimate sacrifice creating what this country is. And it ain't perfect. And it's far from perfect. 
But man, I promise you this, and I've traveled the world three times over. You find me a better place where people can be as free as they can here, and uh, and I'll move there. But yeah. it, it's so heartbreaking. I can I can cry right now. I can literally cry right now. It is so heartbreaking watching this the world implode on itself, um, and people taking advantage of a legitimate thing like like racism. There is no world in where racism is remotely acceptable, but burning down cities, looting cities, breaking stores, mo- and forget Louis Vuitton and, and Gucci that got robbed. I'm talking about the mom and pop shops that just barely, just barely survived COVID. And, you know, insurance doesn't cover when things get burned down on civil unrest. Like, man, it's just such a, it's just so heartbreaking. And uh, I wish I had an answer for it. And I don't, I don't think anybody does, but but it's going to be interesting to look back and see how this all plays out in 50, you know, 50 years, how this shapes the way our country turns. Yeah, because so. it's, it's getting really fucking crazy out there. This defund the police shit is completely nuts to me. Uh, and no world uh, is that a good idea to have no police in a country with 330 million people in it. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. This is a, a, a new story that just came out last night out of L.A. Uh, since you, you you live there now. Um, the L.A. City Council approved the first step last night in replacing the LAPD with community responders for um, non-violent or non-threatening uh, calls. Uh, how is that going to work <laughs> out? You, listen, I I don't know. I, this is this is sad because obviously people that want to fill those roles have the right intentions. And I'm not saying you know as law enforcement we don't get a lot of training. Um, guys, you know if if agencies were paying for jujitsu training for guys, like it's guys guys have to go out men and women when i say guys i'm just speaking plurally Mm -hmm. men and women you know officers you know they they get minimal defensive tactics in the academy depending on the size of your agency like like nypd gets firearms like twice a year and they've got a 12 pound trigger in a two pound gun you know it's like how they hit anything is is incredible to me you know i've shot a new york trigger and i i feel like i'm pretty pretty handy with a firearm like I can't shoot that Glock. It's insane. Like miss by a mile. It's 12 pounds you're pulling on a two pound gun. You know, people aren't set up for success. Law enforcement, you kind of get the, you get the basics and you really learn how to be a cop out on the street and by working with, you know, the people that have paved the road in front of you. Um, it's a one giant liability. So it's like you start putting people in these positions to respond to calls that don't have the training or the experience. Like, they're going to find out what evil really lurks because even a call that is, you know, a motorist on the side of the road asleep behind their car could turn into a shooting. Right. Uh, And it doesn't matter how you talk to the person. I mean, we go through these trainings and we watch, we watch videos of where poor tactics have led to good shootings, where good tactics have led to bad shootings. And like you try and learn sadly from other people's mistakes, but you know, by watching these videos and being in the moment. And you, like, there are videos out there where a guy, and he admits to it after he got caught, where he killed the female officer just because he could. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's like, unless you've worked in law enforcement, unless you have family that's law enforcement, you never hear these stories. Um, you know, the media has a way of portraying everything. It's It's really sad. There's... There's no, like, I, I see a story. Now, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I saw the memes coming out of, you know, of, of that, of the man and the woman. Ken that and lived Karen. In, Ken and I, Karen, brother. Yeah. I love them. I'm okay, a big so, fan. So, I, so I, I saw the memes. I think they popped up on uh, some cops' Instagram page first. And I thought it was just a Photoshop. I had no idea what the backstory was. <laughs> And I just thought it was funny. And then I started seeing them imposed on the Delta Force picture. I think you guys did <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, this is genius. And then I saw, then I, then I realized that it's, that it's a real couple. And I saw on Vice News, they're like, 
you know, upper class white family attacks, protesters, all that, you know, and then I went on another media page and I saw the entire video. Oh, sorry. Did I, a, did, did it cut out the voice? There no, too? no, your voice good. is fine. You're good to go. Someone should tell zoom that they should make a way to disengage your phone and text messages when, when you're on a zoom conference. Yeah, no shit. It's a don't, brand don't new people company. Know who I'm talking to Actually, right now. No, you can, uh, sakes, I'm important. Yeah, I'm yeah. an important man. If you uh, swipe so, down from the top right of your phone, and yeah. you're using an iPhone, I assume, right? Yep. And then click that thing that looks like a crescent moon. That'll silence all of your uh, all of your incoming Done. shit. Look at that. We're learning. Like we're learning a lot today. But we're also teaching as well. Dan. Yeah. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're we're doing some stuff. Yeah. Uh, you I, know. I, so I, I ended up getting to see the full story, <laughs> and those people knocked down that person's gate, and. Who knows if they burn the house down, you know, like yeah, yeah. you never know what an angry mob is going to do, regardless of what they're protesting, regardless of an angry mob is capable of, of anything. Yeah. That's why you don't see uh, like Frankenstein's monster cruising around anymore. He just stays at home for the most part because he doesn't want to get chased through the streets by an angry mob. And I don't blame him. He has to. He has to. Uh, those <laughs> bolts are actually to get him from going outside and, and attacking. Yeah. People. It's like a shock collar. Uh, so, yeah, it turns out that these people are Democrats. They donate to Democratic people. Like candidates, get the fuck out! So of here. One of the guys actually, one of the candidates actually gave them their money back because I don't want their money. Brr. Really? Uh, yeah. He, he, like this is happening. Here's, here's the thing about the Second Amendment, right, bro? Is it doesn't care if you're a Republican yeah. or a Democrat? Nope. Yeah, it certainly doesn't. I don't either. I don't give two fucks about either one of these corrupt ass political parties. I just think it's kind of interesting that, like the in the same sense that people will destroy their own communities during this stuff, they will go after people who agree with them. Like you, all those videos that I saw coming out of Chaz, it's one of two things. It was either uh, mentally ill people mm -hmm. or like two different factions of uh, far left dumb dumb arguing with each other about who's got the right to do what. Right. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I don't know what that city was thinking, allowing that. I've heard that they're starting to dismantle it right now. I don't know if that's true or yeah, not. Yeah, they started this morning. I, yeah, I, I, saw, I saw some overhead shots this morning, and, uh, you know, they're getting rid of Chaz. And I'm, me, I'm pissed off. I had a, an Airbnb thing down there in the middle of it. Um, right. <laughs> I had to cancel. Um, it was a one bedroom. It was me and my wife were just going on a little staycay, um, you know, to, to Chaz out to Chaz, and we had to cancel that. Obviously, babysitters pissed. Um, we had to return the diapers because we were, you know, there's no bathrooms there, so we were just playing around, wow. pissing and shitting ourselves. But uh, oh, you mean return the diapers for you guys, not the children? Correct. I see. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna obviously in Chaz. There's no bathroom, so you know. Well, there is kind of BYOD on that one. Bring your own diaper. It's everywhere is a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I mean, look, the world is a bathroom. Yeah. Um, and that's what Chaz was founded on. And uh, I never got to go there. Didn't uh, never got to go to uh, East Germany. Either. Didn't Matt Damon go to Mars and use his own shit to make potatoes or something? I, I don't remember so. what happened there. Is I that, believe so. Is that he turned real? out fine. Is that Matt, a, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah, I, I, he turned you, out you fine. You guys know the story. Do you know the story behind that, by the way? Behind his uh, Team America appearance? Yeah. No, no, tell me. So rumor has it from a pretty credible source. The reason why that's Matt Damon is because when they were making the movie, when Matt Damon's puppet showed up, it was broken. And instead of spending all the money to fix it, and they didn't really have the time to fix it, they just made the, the puppet go, Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> right. That sounds right, though. With him. It, makes, it makes sense. I, I believe that. I read a, an article about those guys where they were talking about making that movie, and they said it was fucking miserable. They were like, dude, trying to shoot puppets, um, do, make, you know, doing stuff and, and everything else, they were like, it's the goddamn worst thing on the planet. Uh, one of the greatest movies of all time, so the sacrifice <laughs> was worth it, but... Um, that last song where they're talking about all the stuff like America, fuck yeah, and it's like yeah. the internet, Walmart, and then slavery and shit like that. <laughs> that whole that whole song is the funniest shit. That last song in the movie it's is the great. funniest shit ever. It's fucking it. great. But you couldn't. I, I say you couldn't do that now, but South Park doesn't really slow down, do they? No. If, look, if you establish yourself <laughs> as a as a dirt bag again. We talked about this before. If you establish that's your brand of comedy forever, yeah. nobody is going to come after you'd you. Think that, like, you'd think right, cool. that, but four episodes of It's Always Sunny got removed. By, yeah, not they, not by them, by Hulu. Yeah. I know, but like yeah. uh, uh, South Park is on Hulu as well. Mm. And hey, I you just just remember this, guy, Season five of Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that should I be mean, pretty when wild. That, what, that will, 
if anyone can fix our world, it's going to be Rick Sanchez. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I named my dog Morty, uh, actually, I, in honor of the show. So I, I named Tyler Gray, who <laughs> you guys have probably had dinner with before once or twice. Yeah. I call him Pickle Rick. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's he's a little pickle rickish. He's a little pickle rickish. I feel like you could throw Tyler into pretty much any situation, and he would come out of it somehow. He oh would my figure god, out I I got so many stories. Dude, I've known Tyler about ten years. I, like I've never. I'll tell you. Like I don't get impressed much by people. That dude never stops impressing me. Mm, yeah. I've watched him. I, I've watched him come out of a funk. Obviously, rightly so. The dude, you know. The dude had a dream as a kid, just achieved his dream, and then that dream got ripped out of his arms, like no pun intended. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> and totally, uh, I'm assuming everyone who's listening to your podcast knows who Tyler Gray is, and if they're not, they should just fucking hang up right. Yeah, now. Yeah, we, we've done we've done obviously four or five shows with Tyler, but I, I did a, a, a one-on-one interview with him. Are, were you on that show? Uh, no, no, I no. did a one-on-one that interview a, with him because I didn't know anything about his life. And uh, it was one of the most powerful episodes we've ever had in the history of our show. And I was like, holy shit. Um, that guy is one of the most impressive human beings I've ever got to talk to in my entire life. Yeah, he could have. 100% not, he, agree. Regardless of whatever he decided to do in life, he was going to do it well. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's just that kind of guy. On the other hand, there's Burt Koontz. Real piece of shit. Who is a giant piece of shit. Real he's the biggest of piece of shit. Uh, st- like, not in worst. size. He's t- he's small. He's a, he's a, he's a beefcake, but he's. He's yeah. short, so he, uh-huh. but he's still like. A you think size. he? You think he's strong, dude? I think he's so small. I think he's got little chicken legs. <laughs> like, I think he needs. I think if Bert were to wake up in the morning and pound like ten pancakes and five eggs and a giant cup of black coffee, he'd be big. Yeah, maybe. Yo, look. Have you seen his Instagram lately? Because he's going shirtless every two days now. Um, and I he's, get it. He's jacked like an El Camino in the front yard of a Mexican. If I like Bert. I would be shirtless all the time. That dude's a fucking stud. I know. I, I would too. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see him and uh, Max wrestle, like just like dude a- Max. So Max, I, I put my money on Max. Bert, they you know they'd probably choke each other out till they both were dead. Mm-hmm. But Max legit can wrestle. That dude. That dude is strong as an ox. He Somehow as every as time there's a fight scene, I'm the one having to break him up, break it off. I. I've broken fingers on Max. I, I, that dude is no joke, legit. That dude, let me tell you a story about that dude. That dude broke a rib while filming. He tripped, fell, and he was holding an actor. And that guy, that guy saved, like, it, it was just a freak accident. He just saved the day. He saved, you know, he, she could have gotten hurt, you know. No, it was like, it was a freak accident. And that dude put her before himself. He's just such a great dude. He's so kind, so honest, so genuine. Have you had him on the show yet? Not yet. No, no, yeah. Oh, dude, he's a guy's guy. You'd love him. Mm. Just, you know, there's very few people in the world that you can ever think of anything bad to say, like that you can't think of anything. I can't think of anything bad to say about him. The guy is awesome. Um. I mean, dude, everyone we work with on this show is just great. Have you, like, they're at the level of which everybody's gotten behind the veteran community mm-hmm. to help <clears throat> and the charities that everybody's gotten behind. I mean, it's gone from making a, a TV show to actually helping people, which yeah. is, which is phenomenal. You know, I, I've never in my entire life, you know, I, I've never in my entire life seen such a devoted group of individuals, not only from the actors, but from the writers to the producers, yeah. everyone, everyone, you know, every month there's some sort of charity that whether it's someone from props is doing someone from the sound department, whether it's like jogging with frogmen or doing stuff for, you know, building homes for vets or for headstrong, you know, like, the fact, like David Boreanaz, our, our lead actor on the show, like pushed to get us, set up to go do this whole thing for headstrong with uh with um with uh price is right which was incredible our, the, the our... game show yeah no shit <clears throat> did you um, yeah, bro, did you... you make contact with steve harvey's mustache at all no dude not steve harvey's that's one's drew carey oh it's drew carey i'm yeah. sorry i was thinking family feud 
Did you get to play yeah. on fucking Wheel of Fortune yeah. or uh, on a Price Yeah, right? me and Dita, bro. Come on. Dita and I were on Price is Right. Did she spin the wheel? Are you fucking serious? Go through this story. I don't. I've, I haven't heard this. Oh, man. So, uh, so Dita and I have actually been on the Price is Right twice, which is pretty cool. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. One time we went over there for pet adoption month and we mm. hung out with Drew. And, uh, and the second time, uh, so, uh, Tony, Neil, Max, myself, and David went to the Price is Right for Headstrong. And Price is Right matched us for every dollar that the lead contestant won. Um, How much did you win? Awesome. I think we weighed somewhere in like just shy of a hundred grand. Holy mm. shit. That's amazing. Yeah, it, it was, it was a big check they cut. I mean. Drew Carey's the man. He's such super pro military. Well, he's a former veteran. Marine. I know, but you never know. Some people get out and they're like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's behind me. You know, yeah. I want to focus on business now. Or you never know who, you know, you never know the way people are going to be when they, you know, get into yeah. into the spotlight. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just, I, it was incredible. And, and, uh, Dita and I ended up with David and, and our, we had to guess the price on some washer dryers, but, Little do they know, I just looked at that unit like five days prior at Home Depot when I was <laughs> getting new washer dryers. So we, uh, we 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 guided our contestant to the win. It was it was so much fun. The energy there, just you know, and it was an all veteran crowd, and we were you know brought some patches and some challenge coins from the show, and we was able to give them out to some of the veterans. And you know, it's like it's cool, you know, when you're at a bar and a hot girl recognize you from seal team which has never happened to me but i'm sure it's happened to other people um <laughs> but uh um but you know when veterans and and when when active duty watch the show and they appreciate it and you meet dudes uh that are out there carrying and carrying a gun in defense of this nation and they say thank you for making the show and 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 they love it because it allows dudes to sit down with their kids and show them you know because when you're you know when you're in a unit like that you don't talk about what you do at the dinner table but if you can open up a format for your kids to ask questions you know communication is everything and and, and <clears throat> this show the writers on it you know they're the executive producers you know tyler you know everyone's put so much so much work into this um and i really think that they've done such a one i think that we all have done such a wonderful job on it um not to pat myself on the back in that sense but just i'm proud of it i'm really proud of it i i don't feel i feel like it portrays accurately and i feel like the show actually makes a difference and helps people through charity and through storyline are you a single dude in real life I, no, 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 no. I got a girlfriend. Oh, okay. Because that, that seemed like what you were saying there. And I was like, how the fuck is that possible, dude? Um, single dude on a, on a, you know, a huge show like that? That's crazy. Oh, uh, no, no. I, I Listen, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I've got a girlfriend. Not single, but uh, I can make <laughs> jokes about it. That kind of stuff. How long is the girlfriend? I'll tell you whether uh, you can or can't. Uh, going on six months. Oh, fuck. You're fine then. Yeah, you can keep ripping. You can keep firing away. When it gets past two years, that's when it's like, hey, the jokes are over, motherfucker. Uh, but like six months, yeah, you're good to go. You know, you can still throw in a, you know, hey, I got a beach when I was at uh, uh, El Compadre the other night, that type of thing, where it's just like, no, you didn't. No one Is that a special sucked. kind of drink? Yeah, no one sucked your dick there after a flaming margarita, did they? Did they suck your dick after a flaming marker? No, and it's like, I'm kidding. It's only a six-month relationship. It's a flaming Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Two years, though. That's when they start getting serious. Of like, hey, those dick-sucking jokes are over, bro. Like, we're, we're on two years, and you haven't married me yet. Yeah, she's I, – this one's, this one's sticking around. She, she's the best. Ah, she's, uh, we'll see. I've never – I'll keep her as long as she'll, she'll allow me the privilege of, of being around. She's, she's pretty special. Because you look like you could step in and be the new Superman. And if that happens – yeah, uh, you're flying away, my man. <laughs> Bro, you haven't you haven't even seen me like without a shirt. There's no way I could be Superman. Well, yet. not well in this car, half up. Like <laughs> you've got one of the best. Yeah, uh, 
Like from a paraplegic standpoint, you look great, right? There. I think I it's. Uh, the I can't I, see the ball the way. I yeah. think I think it's funny that you think I haven't seen you shirtless. <laughs> to be straight, oh. like, yeah, come on, give me a fucking break, dude. <laughs> you think I, nobody comes on this show without me seeing them shirtless? It's first. true. Whether they give me the picture or I find it somewhere else. Navy Seal. Did Ray, Matt Ray Best Cash show you kit. the naked pictures that he took of me? Matt Best, I'm sure he would show me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I want to see it. No. It He's pretty loyal. He would he would delete those pics. You seem like you're a little too excited about me seeing this. To be yeah, honest. did you pose for it? Did you yeah, hire what? a photographer? Is it bourgeois photos or whatever the is fuck Is it they're French? Called? Is it black? Did you go black and white with a little bit of cocoa? It was, it cocoa was, it was, really, it was really tasteful. It was <laughs> kind of like a femme noir or like a film noir kind of uh, 1950s. Ah. Um, yeah. Parisian. Audrey Hepburn style. Yeah, making yeah, yeah. my hair all nice. It was under a waterfall with a fucking midget on your shoulders. Yeah, we, and the midget's I, I naked think, too. I don't think, guys. I don't think you can use that word anymore. Oh, I can. I just oh, did it. I literally uh, just did it. Are they called dwarfers now? Uh, I don't know, I, I, but I feel like midget midget is was a medical term. So I'm not. We can't just like start changing medical terms, can we? Yeah, I don't believe so. It's a condition. I don't I, know. I believe it's on the side of medication. LP. Um, yeah, uh, little little people. Little peeps. I think little that. Peeps. I think. I think. I think for the current. I think that that is the politically correct. Yeah, and the current don't name, you current don't you landscape. think that the phrase "little person" is way more offensive than "midget"? Fuck yes, I that do. sounds so demeaning. Yeah, little, like little. Oh, he's just a little person. Don't worry about him. Like what the fuck? Midget, know. midget sounds strong and powerful. Like I'm a midget. Yeah. Versus I'm a little person. That makes it seem like oh, go grab me a giant lollipop so I can fucking live out your fantasy. Like what would Oz. Bridget the midget's porn name have been if the word midget wasn't acceptable? Uh, br- uh Lily the little 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 fucking something. Is that L-I-L. a real person? Yeah. Yeah, she's Bridget the Midget. Yeah. R.I.P. I think she's dead, right? I don't know. She should be. Uh, no, she's she's uh, she's in jail for murder. Alec, look that up real quick. I think she's in jail for stabbing somebody. Um, but I think I think she would probably class it up and go Brigé the Mijé. I think uh, that's like, what you would uh, call like it. Joe Dirt. Yeah, Brigé the Mijé. The Mijé. Hmm. Um, you ever, so you ever a question, sex with one? question for you. <laughs> a question for you, mm-hmm. dude. I'm I'm still a virgin. I'm waiting till marriage. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh we well. Yeah. Well, I, with, I, I did too. With, wait, wait till you do it. It's with, amazing. With chicks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dudes don't count, obviously. <laughs> Duh. I mean, it's like, uh, hey, you guys have both been to Afghanistan, right? No, I've only been to Iraq. Yeah. Iraq. Yeah, no, I've I've never been to either. Never had the opportunity to go to Afghanistan, unfortunately. Yeah, do I, have you been there? Yeah, I've been to Afghanistan. Um, yeah, I haven't you were, been to Iraq. I've been on the border of Iraq. Never been to Iraq. You were kind of uh, like a war correspondent or some shit for yeah, a little while? Yeah, I was a while. photographer for a little bit. Like, how the fuck did that happen? And how did you get yeah. access to the fucking DOD press corps so you could get there? It's, <laughs> it's not exactly the easiest um, thing to do. No, 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 no. Uh, so, how did it all happen? I used to work in New York in nightclubs back in the day. And... Uh, one morning I woke up and I realized that I was a giant virus and the people I was around were sucking the life out of me and I just had no interest in um, no interest in continuing. I couldn't see myself alive in that world. You know, I just I just I just felt like the life was getting sucked out of me and I wasn't adding any value to anything. So um, did some soul searching, got into photography, started shooting fashion stuff, and then realized it was just the same people, just different time of day. And um, a buddy of mine had quit the nightclub world and started a charity where he was digging wells in Uganda um, so people could get fresh water. And I kind of was like, oh, fuck it, YOLO, I'll go. He needed someone to go get some pictures of the well because it was up. Uh, up in an area called Atiak, which is uh, which is north of a town called Gulu, which is famous for the Lord's Resistance Army. Mm. Uh, remember Coney 2012? Yep. Dude, do I? I donated so much money. I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sent a, I sent them T-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> but it was for the team uh, and, and, that uh, lost the Super Bowl. They never got Coney, by the way. Spoiler alert. No, he's still out, there. still out there. Yeah, he's yeah. still out there. And you got you people are still looking for him, but so he's running yeah, a different so charity now. This was 2006, and went out there for what was supposed to be a week that took me about a month. And uh, and man, it's you know 
you think you've seen it all when you grow up in New York City and you step off that plane and reality just hits you in the fucking face. Yeah, no shit. Um, you realize how lucky life is just to have been born here. Um, how much we take for granted and, and, and how much pain and suffering is actually out there in the world. Um, so Coney was destroying, this was 2006. They just kind of got him out of Uganda. He was in central African Republic or Congo. Mm -hmm. No one was quite sure, but he, him and his, him and his crazy army of drugged out child soldiers were, were, were not present. Uh, there were still elements of them there, but not present at the levels that they had been like six months prior. So, uh, went there, got the photographs of the well, um, off the GPS coordinates that I was given and, and then came home with a giant bug of, of, com of war photography. And I wanted to understand what was happening in the world. And, 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 and really, you know, it's that moment when Morpheus gave Neo the red pill or the blue pill and was like, Hey, you can take this and wake up tomorrow in your bed. And this will have been a dream or I'll show you just how deep this fucking rabbit hole goes. And I took the red pill. So any regrets? Uh, because it sounds like you have a, a few regrets about it. You know, listen, man, ignorance is bliss, but honestly, I'd rather die informed than live ignorant. Um, I, I, I've been very fortunate. I had some pretty shitty mentors as a kid. I never had a dad. I, you know, I didn't have a dad since I was like 20 years old. And, you know, I just had scumbags kind of mentoring me through my early adult years. But when I got into the combat photography and started meeting awesome individuals, uh, when I got to Afghanistan, which was like my, my sixth or seventh big trip, um, I just, that's when it changed my life completely. And, you know, I met incredible human beings that taught me how to be a man and, and responsibility and accountability and you know, if you ask me what my regrets are in life, it would just be not a, joining the military at 18. Um, you know, not have got, if I, if I could have done two things differently, I would have served our country in the military and I would have gone to college. Other than that, every other mistake I've made, I would continue to have done because I've learned a lot from it. Uh, but those two things are things that if I could go back and do it again, I would, I would completely do. Um, I just, you know, the caliber of human that goes and leaves their loved ones at home in order to ensure that their loved ones have a safe future, uh, that's who I want to be when I grow up. And it's a little late for that, but, you know, that's who, I, that's who I can aspire to be when I grow up still. You know, someone that, someone that will go that extra mile to keep, our loved ones and the people we care about safe at home. Man, I, everything you've described so far about your life, um, how, how did you go from all of that to being on a TV show in Hollywood? Like, it just seems so fucking wild. It's a crazy, it, it's, it's a wild story, dude. Um, the joke is it would only happen to me. Um, I, have, I have two rules in my life is always treat everybody the way I want to treat my children or I want my children to be treated uh, and never say no to anything unless it's illegal or immoral. And even um, then, even then, yeah, it looks like you're talking. Cause when so. you were talking about the red pill, blue pill thing, I took both pills today. <laughs> I, I watched him take both today before we went on the show. I mean, I don't see so. why not. Like you give me two options. I think that's a false choice. Like Democrat or Republican. No, I'm good, man. I'm taking whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see what happens on the other side of it. Yeah. So Dan, on, the, on the illegal side there, you just eliminated 90% of Dan's life by saying that. No, so, close. Kidding, yeah, but, but the moral side, I'm sure there's a, there's a moral, you know. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But I, you know, people like, uh, People like me, I think we're just principled sociopaths. Like we enjoy the society that we live in and see the goodness in it mm -hmm. and prefer it mm -hmm. to chaos because I want to be chaos, but I can't be chaos if everything else is chaos. Right. So you have to support the infrastructure of the country. You wanna, you well, let me mean? ask you a question. If, if everything's chaos and you become order, then you're, then you're winning because order is chaos to chaos. Yeah, 
And then you become Stallone from uh, that movie. I am the law. Yeah, which I is am the <laughs> law. which is why every time there's civil is that Cobra. No, so. that's Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd. Yep. Oh, uh, God, you watch that movie? No. The old one, not the new one. The not new the one new with one. Carl Urban was terrible. <laughs> I love Carl Urban as an actor, but that movie was dog shit. I, look, I I liked him as a lover. I, I, I don't nothing about his acting skills, but uh, big fan of him in the sack. Um, but yeah, how did you get there? Uh, how do you? How'd you get on the fucking show in Hollywood? It's crazy. Well, you see that sofa. No, so, um, <laughs> so, so I knew Mark Owen, the guy who wrote No Easy Day, mm-hmm. from while he was uh, while he was still in the Navy, and uh, when the, and I also knew Tyler from ten years ago, and mm-hmm. I had no idea that the two of them knew each other, and uh, I was up in Tahoe doing some high altitude. Uh, training with Dita doing search and rescue stuff up in the snow up there. Cause they had an ungodly amount of snow and she'd never, never seen that level of snow. So we went out into the mountains and we were doing like a, a seven day training evolution up there. And, uh, I get a call from Tyler from, uh, Mark Owen and, uh, they're, you know, they wanted, and they were the, the way the messages came through. I thought it was two different things. So I'm like, what's going on in, they need a dog, whatever. So, uh, basically, Tyler and, and Mark Owen created this opportunity for me, um, and uh, and I showed up with the dog. And uh, oh yeah, so so right before that, Tyler's like, "Hey, go get all of your equipment and ship it down to New Orleans." So I, I bought a flight. You know, the production didn't even pay for it. You know, I bought a flight, left my dog with somebody, flew to New York. I had all of my equipment at uh, at Caleb Cry's office in New York City. Uh, Cry Precision, a yeah. really old, yeah, really old friend of mine. I was mm-hmm. doing a lot of consulting for his company, so I had tons of gear. Um, shipped it all down to the pilot episode, overnighted it, like two thousand pounds, uniforms, plate carriers, helmets, everything, night vision, blah 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 blah. Uh, shipped it all down to New Orleans and. Then flew back to L.A. and drove all the way to New Orleans, got there and showed up. And the showrunner just looked at me and says, hey, why don't you just be the dog handler? And I was like, well, doesn't that involve needing to know how to act? He's like, ah, you'll figure it out. <laughs> so um, this is the guy with the fucking mini donkey. Yeah, what, I have a mini donkey. What's, yeah. his, what's his name? The showrunner uh, that has the mini donkey or whatever? The rescue? Oh, donkey? no, 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 no. You're thinking of J. Michael Miro, the cinematographer. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he, so he's he's not down there. He's not a, he he wasn't available for the pilot. So he's our our executive producer, uh, Chris Chulak, who is kind of the driving force behind the show with Mark Owen. Uh, he he did like Longmire and Southland mm-hmm. and all these incredible shows. So Jimmy is his guy. Uh, Jimmy was unavailable because he was doing another movie or something like that. So we had a different, incredible cinematographer named Gonzalo mm. who was down there for the pilot. But oh yeah, but Jimmy's the, Jimmy's Miro. a steady cam guy, right? I mean, back in the day for he like Heat and all that cam. bullshit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Head, yeah heat, that's right. The guy is the guy is a madman in the most insane artistic form and sense you could ever imagine. <laughs> that guy, that guy is so impressive to watch him work. Mm. He makes me want to be a camera operator, actually. I mean, he's if you if you look up steady cam operators, he's like the Michael Jordan of that particular thing. Yeah, we did a whole thing on him. We went through yeah. his entire resume. So you, you you go down there, and then how did you get yeah. how did you get on? Did you audition? No, never auditioned ever. Um, they just put you on the fucking thing in the background. Or? Yeah, I'd be, yeah, technically on the well, technically on the pilot episode, I was a stuntman on it. And then when the show got picked up, I was on a stunt contract the whole season. And then they put me on an actor contract uh, after that. No shit. But, it's a crazy story. Yeah, it, dude, it, it literally only happened to one other person in Hollywood ever. And the entire that I've ever heard of. And that person is a guy named Grizzly Adams. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's Grizzly fucking Adams insane. showed up with a bear on set, and they ended up making him an actor. That's crazy, um, man. That's funny. It, it, it's wild. Listen, it is what you know. 
it's like any job in the sense where if you're if each watching these guys i mean i went to the best acting school that money could buy i went to i went to an acting school that's 711 dollars a minute you yeah, know, or yeah. a million dollars. You know, it's it's so expensive. Each one of these episodes is a gazillion dollars. Mm, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> it's like I'm 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 watching seven people that all are incredible at their craft perform. Yeah. And you know, it's like I didn't really have any dialogue the first season. I mean, I did. You know, after episode four, I had bits and pieces here and there. Um, but you know, I I, I got every day. It's not like I'm a I have tons of dialogue. I can sit there and study what these guys are doing and watching them work is incredible. They are, they are at the top of their game. I, you know, it's every day. I mean, there'll be scenes where like, like I'll start crying, like tearing up in them because these guys just deliver, you know, performances it gives me chills. It's just watching them work and watching them represent guys that I hold in such high regards. Mm-hmm. It's a really, really cool. And then to watch it all unfold, you know, in the edits is really impressive yeah. as well. It's really interesting. I don't know how it happened or why or what the impetus was, but for some reason this show, maybe more than any I've ever seen, decided to take everything seriously. Like they decided that not just the stories, because wow. there's a one of the guys that writes some of your episodes is an actual uh, seal. Um, so where this show went different than everybody else mm-hmm. is in Hollywood <laughs> – they don't, you know, this show allowed former SEALs and former special operations mm-hmm. guys into the writer's room to talk to them. This show employed veterans at every level yeah. of the show, from background actors to stunt guys to, you know, electricians uh, to craft services to hair and makeup. I'm not speaking in any order. I'm just, you mm-hmm. know, naming the departments to editing, to directors, to producers, to executive producers, to writers. Um, uh, so, so what happened in this, you know, normally in Hollywood, they'll be filming a shootout scene mm-hmm. and the director will have the actors on set and they'll have to go from a helicopter to a building. And the director will say, Tech advisor and the tech advisor will run up, you know, he'll be sitting in the village with his headphones on and he'll run up. Yes, sir. And he'll be like, how does this happen? And the, the tech advisor will say, Oh, this, 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 and this. And then the director will be like, that doesn't work for me. Okay. Bye. And, and the tech advisor will leave, you know, in our sense, you know, Tyler will design the way the action will run or design the way people will move. If it has to do with the team, you know, Tyler will have, will be able to you know give his input and he's so well respected and it's you know that when we have you know our our bosses who direct episodes they respect what tyler has to say because you know that's why the show is authentic in that sense yeah so so people and and they care you know our showrunner spencer uh hudnut our executive producer chris chulak uh our other executive producer mark owen you know, Mark was, Mark was a seal forever. Um, our writers, Mark Simos and Kenny Sheard, mm. um, you know, our tech advisors, Chase Rivera, you know, Tyler Gray, like these guys, everybody that we work for that pay our paychecks, respect these guys for what they've done for this country and, and how they're portraying bravo team Mm. and it's so important to each one of those people that are the bosses that this show nails it because what our men and women of our country have gone through for the past 20 years ain't no joke man it's i mean you talk to dudes that had 17 deployments they've missed birthdays anniversary forget the fact that they might be killed you know we have wives that are raising kids you know for a 15-year career while you know while dudes are deployed you know, the sacrifice goes on both sides of it. So so if we can make a show that honors that sacrifice to those men and women, the ones that stay behind domestically and the ones that are deployed, that that's what matters. Mm. That's what really matters to each and every one of them. So I, I take my hat off for them. There's not a person on that show that that doesn't have my undivided love 
for their passion of getting this right. Well, look, we're obviously gigantic fans of the mm-hmm. show. Um, we've had a, almost the entire cast on because uh, we love how you guys do it. Um, and more importantly, um, all the people you hire behind the scenes uh, and continue to hire. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for coming on the show today. This is the point uh, where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Which is someone who's Wait, are we, you're kicking me off already? I hang on, like... brother. You get to give the drinking bro of the week out. So this is someone that has inspired you uh, or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? God, you know, there's so many people that absolutely completely deserve it because I am. Yeah, now now who's kicking someone off the show, yeah. my man? Yeah. You know, you get faced oh, with uh, a tough decision in life, and you, right now you're freezing. I would, uh, man, the list is long. There's there's 20 dudes that are on this earth and that aren't that, that deserve that title, and I'm trying to think of the one that... The Honorable Elijah Muhammad? No. No, not him. Okay. Uh, it it looked like that seconds. was on the tip of your tongue. It looked like that was on the tip of your tongue. Yeah. The uh, no, no, Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Uh, but think about it. Is that the guy from... I, you know, I, I, there, there's a captain that I spent a lot of time with in Afghanistan uh, named Eric Viennan. And I haven't seen him in years, but that's one person that I would... Definitely, I don't know where he is in the world, and I'm trying to dig up his number and give him a call later. But that's one dude right there that I would definitely say I aspire to be more like every day that's possible. Uh, he was a great leader. He's a great leader. Um, he's an incredible human being, inspiring person. Um, but man, the that, that that's a hard I mean that question made me tear up right there dude mm. um that's a really serious question to, I, I'm gonna give it to Eric Viennan and I hope he's well wherever he is because he was an inspirational human being uh kind of leader that would run into battle first and I remember going and we were coming back, we were in Gardez, and we were driving back to Kabul through, I believe it was the Khyber Pass. Mm. And someone had called in an IED, and and some of the, the, the young National Guard guys were going to go check it out. And he was like, no, guys, you're it's almost time for you to go home. Like, I got this. And I actually, I, I, I was like, fuck this, I'm going to go with him. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I walked up with him to go check this little culvert because someone had reported seeing wires come out of it. And, you know, we left the convoy like 200 meters back and walked up the side of this road in the middle of nowhere together. Like, you're just the kind of guy, like, I'm a combat photographer, dude. I didn't have a rifle. Like, can't defend yourself from a fucking IED anyway. But no, no. he's just the kind of guy that, like, you were going to leave this earth. You wanted to leave it next to him because he's just a fucking Viking. And just, but, but a kind and compassionate and, and, and and the same dude to go out in villages and bring, you know, backpacks and candy and school supplies for kids. Um, offer his water to, to women, you know, in these remote villages and stuff. Just an awesome dude. But, man, I've been really fortunate. You know, the last, the last 10 years of my life, from 30 to 40, I've had some of the most incredible, inspiring human beings around me that, have just taught me what's important and it's not money. It's not fame. It's not material objects. It, it, it's literally trying to leave this world a better place than you found it. Mm. Well said. Yeah. Well it's said. hard to, uh, you like if you just in general, if you want to be better in life, surround yourself with people like Tyler gray, cause you can't, you can't fucking feel sorry for yourself or complain one single day of the year. Yeah. After. No, he's Ty, Ty, Tyler would have been the easiest answer to give you, but Tyler would have expected me to say that. Yeah, so fuck him. He's yeah. already been drinking yeah, yeah, before. Tyler. No, Ty, you know, I share an <laughs> office with Tyler. I share a trailer most of the time with Tyler. I, you know, he's 
he's he's he's uh he's probably the best big brother i've ever had mm. in my life uh i would do absolutely anything in the world for that mm. dude and watching him watching him is incredibly inspirational and and tyler is great because he'll always give you true advice there's no sugar coating it with him yeah yeah i would have said true. six from blossom as mine but uh mm. i like girls with really small torsos and long other features like her arms Who's and legs. Six are... from Blossom. Uh, you remember the TV, the hit TV show Blossom? No. Uh, with Joey Lawrence. Yeah, and then, you're, uh, you're forty. How do you not know that? Come on, dude. You didn't grow up with Blossom. I haven't had a TV. I've not owned a TV since the towers went down in two thousand. Well, Blossom's before that, so you, you can't can lose the TV. In the you towers? can't. You can't blame it on nine eleven, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Blossom was on the air in the fucking nineties. Yeah, it was, on, it was a nineties show, my man. And you try to blame it on nine eleven. What a scumbag, Oof, dirt bag. Uh, follow this dirt bag. It's uh, is it Justin nine eleven? Um, is that was that your username? Is that your <laughs> too soon, bro? Too soon. Too soon. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. that's funny. No, uh, tell everybody where they can follow you on social media. Um, uh, Justin Melnick, just my name. Oh, you got it. That, look, you're lucky if you're actually able to get your your name. Well, that's that not a common so, name. So, 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 true story. I wasn't able to get my name. Ah, someone had Justin Melnick. But remember when that first big Instagram scare came like nine years ago, mm -hmm. where everyone was like. Instagram is stealing all of your pictures and all of your personal information, so everyone deleted their accounts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the other fucker that had my name got scared, and he fucking dropped it and ran. And I got online, and I punched in Justin Melnick, no spaces, no underscores, and I grabbed it. Oh, you SOB. That's a nice move. Yeah, mine's... Yeah. mine's uh, I was super late to social media, so I didn't get any of my names at all. Um, I just didn't want to get on it after 9-11. Um, yeah, I was... So you know, I kind of waited, but so. it, between, I heard you between were one of the Blossom, first people on Grinder though. Oh, he I was. was. Yeah, yeah. Now that's I that's hopped different. All though. over. Yeah. Yeah. It was um, him and Lindsey Graham actually. Yep. Me and Lady G. We. Uh... So funny story. I I saw Grinder <laughs> when it first came out, and I went to my IT buddy, and I was like, "Dude, we need to start this for heterosexual people, or you know, you can choose your preference, but get girls on it and yeah. all that stuff." And he's like, "Oh my god, that would never work." And this is like a brilliant IT dude that would never work. And it would be like a safety thing and no one would get on it because they'd be scared of like meeting creeps on the internet. And I was like, I just let it go. And then about a year ago, he found an old email that I sent him and he's, he, and he's forwarded back and he goes, look at the date on this. You know, it was like 2004. <laughs> You could have been a gajillionaire, my man. Yeah. Instead, you're here with could us. Could have had the first, I know, right? In <laughs> yeah. a rental car. In a, a, a medium-sized rental car. Yeah, in a mid-sized SUV with a dog sleeping in the back, you know? Hey, but you know what? At least I stayed in a Holiday Inn Express last night. Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn right you He did. keeps plugging these companies, and I can't tell if he's- I can't either. Like, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. Who, who are you sponsored by? Oh, not much. <laughs> no, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but I did save 10% by switching to Geico. <laughs> I saved 10% by fleeing the scene of an accident. Yeah, Dan did. <laughs> Which is basically the same thing, except for there's no little fucking uh, Lizard. lizards involved. Yeah, that's after you. Yeah. Not at all. Well, he's <laughs> never been after me that I know uh, of. He could be. I don't know. You never know. It could be the fucking uh, the brick of bills with the googly eyes. What's up on that little shelf right behind you? Uh, Which one? Which one? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, make it oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, this is uh, water from Flint, this Michigan. This is actually Flint water, uh, water from Flint. Dead serious. No fucking oh, yeah. way. Yeah, we had a listener send it in. And uh, this, we haven't drank is it, it like yet. Just, this is a rifle from, uh, from Palmetto State kind of Armory. Rifle, bro? Palmetto. It's a uh, it's a SBR fucking three hundred blackout. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Who makes it? Uh, Palmetto State Armory. Nearby. I'm not familiar with them. They, it's, it's, but be careful because. According to the media, that thing could go off for oh, like yeah, no know. reason whatsoever. <laughs> it's never even been fired before, and I'm already scared. Yeah. I, yeah. You should be so yeah. scared. And those, and they cause COVID. I think it says that on the box. So oh. uh, everybody oh, be definitely be, Only uh, the protected. Chinese version, probably. Well, hey, man, we wish you the best. We love the show. Thank you for stopping by today. And uh, get that rental car back safely, will you? I'm going to go do some donuts right now. Goddamn right you are. You're in, you're in America. In, you're in Indiana, you said? 
Yeah. Are there hills or anything in Indiana? It's pretty flat. Yes. Yeah, pretty flat Indiana. Uh, I don't know if I can flip the camera around, can I? There we go. No. Yeah. Ah, wait. That just made me huge. There you go. We're back. Yeah. Um. There's really no hills anywhere. Nothing mm. in Indiana. Well, yeah. no. Maybe just uh, go find a protest and park your car there. Yeah. Figure it out. And uh, R.I.P. to Chaz, dude. We're gonna miss that city. And um, hope I get my money back on that Airbnb. Uh, they've got a pretty they got a pretty good refund policy right now because just blame it on covid and you'll be fine <laughs> uh everybody check out uh, seal team when it comes back on air yeah and check out justin melnick and uh dita the hair missile on instagram absolutely uh for d'anthony d'anthony holloway i'm ross patterson this is the drinking bros good night everyone